Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's OBS tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can improve your microphone quality and get this nice big broadcasting audio sound for free. That's right. Everything you need to download, you can download for OBS for free. <laughs> Not only that, I'm going to show you how to set everything up so you can get this nice quality audio sound. But before we get started, check out On One Photo Raw. On One Photo Raw gives you control of your photography and what matters to you. On One gives you an open system for complete control over your storage, organization, editing, and method of purchase. On One will also never be a subscription only model. Learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below. Okay, everybody, so I have OBS Studio opened up here on the desktop. Now you will notice we have a desktop audio over here, a microphone, and a tutorial mic. You're currently hearing the audio that I will be editing in DaVinci Resolve later on. So let's hop over here to the tutorial mic. And here we go. So now you're hearing the tutorial mic. This is so you can hear how the audio quality improves as we add our filters and effects in the, the, the chain and everything. So that said, let's go down here to filters and start adding them. Now, like I said, I'm using the tutorial mic. Let's go down to filters and pull this over here so you can see it. We have a few things we're going to be adding here now. The Slick EQ, uh, Nova, and Kotelnikov, those are all plugins that you can get from Tokyo Dawn. Links down in the description below. Completely free and some of the best ones on the market. Hands down, don't bother even buying any unless you need some uh, that better because it's really hard to find anything better than these. Wider is one that we'll be getting from Unfected Mushroom. Links for it down in the description below. Expander is the basic expander that's within uh, OBS Studio. It's fine. Matter of fact, it works really well when you know how to set it up correctly. And that's the problem a lot of people f uh, have is they don't know how to set it up correctly. And I'll show you how. Okay. First thing first, uh, let's get to Slick EQ. Slick EQ is a three band equalizer. Let's turn it on and let's open up the plug in here. Okay. So here we go. We've got the default. This is how it looks when you first bring it up. First thing I'm going to do is make sure it's on live. And it tells you you may have to restart your DAW. Don't worry about that. We're in OBS. <laughs> okay. So put it on live mode. Then we want to go over to German. If you watched my re demo review with Slick EQ, you'll understand the difference in the uh, the curves and stuff. German one has smoother, uh, very smooth curves to it. That's the one I want to use. And that's one I recommend for this one. However, there is a British style one and an American style and a Soviet one in the free version here. All right, so let's click it on over to German. And I'm going to go ahead and click EQ SAT while I'm at it and make sure that's enabled. All right. So we got that going. Let's pull this up here. This is a high frequency, frequency high pass filter up to 50 hertz. And that will help uh, reduce or remove any kind of rumble in our audio. Okay. Then we have our lows, mids, and highs here. Now the lows, uh, these are set at 85, which is what we're going to be using. However, it is currently on a shelf filter. Let's click over and put it on a bell sh uh, bell filter. And the bell looks like an upside down V. Put it on that. All right. For the gain on this one, we are actually going to bring it up. Now I'm going to bring it up to about 7.5 dB here. However, this is going to depend upon your mic and your voice. This, I'm using the Samsung CLA-A, and this is what I need to bring up uh, my audio sound more broadcast sounding. And you'll probably already notice the difference. If your voice is already very deep, you may be able to bring it down something to play plus three. If your uh, voice is very high pitched, you may want to bring it up more. You just have to find what works the best for you. But this is, I'm gonna show you how to set up, make it sound like a broadcast uh, audio. Okay, 7.5 dB is what I use. Now we'll go to the mid frequencies here. By default, this is on uh, 2.5K for most equalizers. We're not going to use that. I'm actually going to bring this down to 400 hertz. And this is going to give us a dip right after the uh, bass here on the low frequency that we have a nice little dip. Very similar to what you find on the DBX-286. And I'm going to bring this down to about 4.5 dB. Okay, so that's coming off the base here, and it's going to go dip down. Then the frequency here on the highs here, 
uh, currently it's on 10 uh, kilohertz. Normally these are on either 10 kilohertz or 12 kilohertz. I'm actually going to bring this one down to 5 kilohertz. And that way when it comes off the bass, it drops down. And since I'm going to bring up the gain on the highs here to make them more clear, it's going to have a nice little, uh, you know, nice little top in there. And we are going to leave that one on the shelf. And I'm going to bring this one up to 9 dB. And this is what works well for my voice. Now, this may sound a little sibilant. However, we're going to TDR Nova. I'll show you how to get rid of the, DS, uh, the S problems, the sibilance problems, as well as add a deplosive filter to it at the same time. Okay. Now we have outstage here. I want to go down and put it on deep because I think deep works well for, the, uh, well for condenser mics and it helps give you that nice broadcast sound. Going to introduce a little bit more uh, to it. Pull it up about 9 dB for the calibrate here. And that's going to introduce more of those uh, even order harmonics. Give a nice good broadcast analog sound. And the out gain here, since we are recording in and it's only peaking between like, you know, 15 to 12 dB uh, coming in, we want to bring that up six more dB, add a little more out gain. And you can tell the volume and the uh, loudness just got quite a bit louder. And now you're starting to hear things quite well. Below that, you will notice a button that says auto. And auto is, if you see my demo review, it helps keep the equalizer more normal. So if you adjust the lows or the highs, it's going to save the same uh, same amount of gain coming out. Leave that uh, turned on. That way, if you adjust it, you don't have to worry about readjusting your out gain or anything. Very good feature. Really high, highly recommend it. And already, I can tell you, uh, this audio is already starting to sound quite a bit better. But we can improve that. Let's go down and turn on TDR Nova. And let's open up that interface. Okay. So, first thing, we only need two bands for what we're going to do here. Also, let's go down and put it on Eco. Now, for the first band here, click on the little square. We are going to, in fact, be using a bell filter, a Q value of 50 or 0 0.5, 0 0.50. And I am going to be bringing that frequency up to 100 hertz because we're going to be working on the plosives. Okay. Now, this is an equalizer, but this is an equalizer. It's a parallel dynamic equalizer with compression and expansion. Very versatile tool. It doesn't help you get any kind of good analog sound to it, but it's a very surgical uh, tool for uh, helping improve the audio qualities by eliminating issues in the uh, audio chain. Okay. The gain we're going to leave set, but we are going to turn on the threshold here. Now the threshold here, I want to go down negative 12 dB on it. And this is where the compression is going to come in at. Okay. Now the ratio here, I am actually going to bring up quite a bit. Matter of fact, let me turn on the you know, equalizer here, the uh, scope here, so you can see what's going on as we talk. Okay. Now the ratio, I am going to crank that joker up really high, 10 to 1 for this. And that's because it won't to stop any kind of plosive should they happen. All right. 10 to 1. That's it. It's almost maxed out. There we go. 10 to 1. Okay. And if I go up, boom, 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 as you can tell, that's helping uh, keep that from getting too uh, bassy, too uh, punching out above too high. It's really helped any kind of plosives issues. Okay. And right after that one, let me see here. Yeah. I think the attack and release 20 milliseconds, 200 uh, milliseconds is about right. That works pretty good. Now, we still got that sibilance problem. Okay. Let's hop over here to the other one. Okay. If you do that, you can see over here, around 9 kilohertz is where the sibilance problem we're coming in at. All right. And the Q value, I want to widen that one out quite a bit. Let's put up about 1.5. I guess what I use for that one for... Make it very tighter, more surgical. And we do want to make sure it is on the bell. Alrighty. Now let's turn on the threshold here. And we can drop that one down about 25. I think that's what, what I use on this one. S -s -s. There we go. Yeah. 25 dB and a ratio about 2.5 to 1. 
All right, and I want to put in a bat of a 10 milliseconds here. And a release, I want uh, about 150 milliseconds. And that'll work really good for any kind of sibilance problems. Now, if you're wanting to find what uh, your S sounds are for you, click on the band solo. As you can hear when you do the band solo, it helps you uh, find where the sibilance problem is for your particular voice. And this is going to help with the plosives and the sibilance. I'm pretty sure you can already tell sounds much better. So yeah, you can uh, use the uh, frequency, go up and down. A lot of people's, uh, depending on if you're female, male, that can go anywhere from 5 uh, kilohertz up to as high as 10 to 12. So currently, like I said, it's something like 10. I need to put down about 9 kilohertz. Yeah, that's where it should be for my voice. Adjust it for where your voice is with the frequency. The, everything else should be pretty much set. And like I said, it's on eco, good to go. Now we're done with TDR Nova. Let's go on to our next you know, plug in here. And then we're going to be adding Kotelnikov for compression. Okay, let's bring this over. All righty, here we go. Let's also put Kotelnikov on eco mode. That way it's easier on everything while you're doing any kind of like live streaming. First thing we need to do is the low frequency relax. Now this won't change your audio quality. It won't filter out anything. It just keeps the comp compressor from getting uh, what you call it, actuated, you know, from like low frequency bumps or anything. So pretty much just put it on, uh, you know, 6 dB. The frequency 100 hertz is fine. Stereo sensitivity of, you know, 80% is fine. Leave it on that. Okay, so right now let's actually start adding this in for Kotelnikov. We want to go to threshold, yeah, negative 25. Now, if you're wondering, I did write all this down to make sure I did not forget everything. Okay, about 20, uh, negative 25 is, see, we're already starting to work. Our gain reduction is already starting to get uh, used here. The peak crest here, I actually want to put that on RMS, so just turn it all the way to the side here. Soft D, I want to bring that up to 9 dB. Okay. And the compression ratio here, what did I use on this one? Let me just check. Yeah, 2.5 to 1. 2.5 to 1 works pretty decent right there. Okay. The attack, I want about uh, 8 milliseconds, I do believe. And release about 250. Yeah. I can get it on there. That's close enough. Okay, now we know to have makeup gain, dry mix. You don't have to worry about that too much. However, the out gain here, I'm going to bring up about another three more dB, just to kind of make up for the amount of gain lost due to compression. And as you can tell, it's already starting to sound, uh, sound really, really nice. And like I said, you got a bypass button you can use here to see what it sounds like without the compression. And here's what it sounds like with the compression. Okay, that's already going to start making the audio sound much better, uh, more normal and less dips and stuff in it when you get too quiet or too loud. So that'll help a lot. Let's close that one out and let's add wider. Wider is stupid simple here. <laughs> you just got a little, you just slide it over to add your width and stuff. It'll go up and down and just start widening out your stereo. However, it can get overly done pretty quick. I normally use 25%. Find what works best for you. Like I said, this is without any kind of widening right here. And this is with widening, you know, added. It adds just a little bit more, you know, depth to the uh, voice and stuff. Give that nice, like, you know, good 1980s and 90s uh, radio uh, stereo uh, quality and stuff coming in when somebody's talking. I like how it sounds. Like I said, it's another one. Stupid simple. And it's also stupid uh, free. <laughs> Last is the expander. Now, by default, the expander is completely set up wrong, <laughs> to say the least. All right. The ratio here we're actually going to be using is pretty uh, high. We want, And the reason we're going to use a 3 to 1 ratio here is because well, a lot of times when people are talking and stuff, we make sure the audio is coming. Yeah. When people are talking and stuff, you want to be able to hear it, but you don't want to be hearing the keyboard clicking and stuff dogs barking too much outside. You just want to hear what the person is talking. All right. So you want to pull that up on three to one. If you're still having trouble, 
increase that on up to four to five or four uh four to one or to five to one just simply by sliding this over five to one's a little extreme to me three to one sounds a little natural however if you got uh audio coming in that you don't want to hear maybe you're on a really really clicky keyboard uh, i'm using red cherry mx reds on my keyboard so it's not as bad as somebody with blue switches or something other you may want to increase that all right threshold here this is another one you may want to bring up. Uh, I actually recommend about negative 32 dB on this. And that what means anything below negative 32 dB uh, is going to get attenuated out, pushed down, so you don't hear it. Uh, if you want, you can bring that on up to negative 25 or even up to negative 20. However, I don't recommend it because it will start to sound a little more uh, choppy. Good. So just find what works best for you. If you're finding that... Uh, you're still getting too much noise in. Yeah, bring it on up to a, to a point where you're happy with. There's no right or wrong. Just whatever you're happy with. It's around negative 32 dB, which is what I recommend to start with. All right. The attack here, I want it 8 milliseconds. Uh, so we can pull that down by 8 milliseconds. And release, though, we want that to a little bit slower. It's currently is like way too fast. So let's pull that up to like 250 milliseconds, something a little bit slower. It's a quarter of a second. It seems pretty fast, but you know, 250 is actually pretty decent here. And the detection is on RMS, and we want it on RMS. So, yeah, this is how the audio can sound if you know how to set everything up. So let's kind of go over everything again. Okay. This is how nothing sounds with nothing added. Let's add Slick EQ. Okay, this is a little Slick EQ added. Now let's add TDR Nova. To add our deplosive and our desibilance problems. Okay. Now let's add Kotelnikov, the our compression, to help normalize our audio and stuff. Let's add wider to help bring out our stereo, uh, serialize the audio, make it sound a little more uh, deeper and more in depth to it. Then expander to help knock out any kind of like background noise and stuff. Now I did want to show you an example of how well, you know, or how, you know, expander will help. All right, let me get notepad open here, and here I am typing, banging on my keyboard. That's with the expander on. Let's turn expander off. And I'm pretty sure you can hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, let me click on that. You can hear those keys coming in. All right, turn expander back on. Yeah, you don't hear it. It's not coming across the meters. So yeah, that's how an expander can help keep all that other background audio and stuff out. So anyway, I hope this tutorial has been quite helpful for you. Okay, everybody. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you like any of these presets and stuff, just go back through the video, pause, write everything down. Then when you actually get the, the plugins and stuff inso installed, then you can just save them as presets. But uh, anyway, that's what I highly recommend. Uh, like I said, all the plugins are free. I don't make anything whatsoever from you downloading those plugins. It's just, I'm just doing it because a lot of, let's face it, a lot of YouTubers have some really crap audio. And I'm just trying to help everybody out here. But if you do want to help this channel out, then check out All One Photo Raw. You can download it if you like editing photos and stuff. It's the program that I use, I recommend. I use it all the time, both you know personally and professionally. It's just a great photo uh, retouching application. And I do get a kickback when you do purchase it. Uh, so I'm an affiliate with On One. So like I said, purchasing On One Photo Raw does help support this channel. So anyway, that's it for this uh, tutorial, everyone. I hope everybody liked it, found it helpful. If you do, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing's free, it's for you. Let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.